Hey guys, this is Flower Girl J once again. Ah, oh, sorry. Uh, hi guys. I like I just can't continue right now with the story because I just lost my uncle yesterday, my dad's brother. So I just I'll probably continue next week, but. There is a reason why I named this video Easter because um, back in March was officially a year since I got out of my churches, like the Unico United Pentecostal churches, period. And not only that, but it was several several anniversaries like in march is was my grandmother's birthday and she died in 2019 um it was the anniversary of my uncle my mother's brother's death and it's just been crazy and i lost so many people my cousin on my mother's side, my grandfather around the same time and his brother. And it's just been a lot of loss since. So just think law uh, like back to back losses from 2019 to 2021. So it's been rough and leaving the Pentecostal church. And yesterday, like the, I'm going to tell you guys, like yesterday when I found out that my uncle passed away, it was like I felt numb. I'm not going to lie. I felt numb. Like, and what I mean by like numb is like, I've experienced death already and it's like I've been crying and mourning for months and it's like I'm gonna be crying and mourning for even more months and right when I was told by my mom I felt like I heard this voice say see this is what happens when you leave when when I mean leave by leaving the church let me tell y'all something. If you guys are, uh, if any of you also, because I know I'm not the only one who's lost a lot of people during this. I mean, it's, he didn't die of COVID. He died of a heart attack in a, in a shopping center. And, you know, he, he passed away in the hospital. So, I mean... If you guys have lost anybody, any loved ones, and you've been out, like, let me just tell you, the enemy will come in when you are most vulnerable and tell you, see, this is what happens when you leave the UPC or whatever church you guys have faced legalism, in, or if you guys have never been through it. I know there's some people who are trying to learn about what spiritual abuse is. I can be... I can definitely reassure you that people who have been through it and have gotten out, like, you are at your vulnerable. Especially when you finally get out and you've experienced a lot of loss. And, but I'm also here to encourage somebody, like, do not believe what the enemy tells you. And maybe I'm just talking to myself. Please don't let the enemy t t uh, speak to you and tell you that your loved one or that person close to you would have lived if you went back to that cult, if you had stayed in that cult. They would have died whether you stayed or not. And I had to call my god dad because like I, it was come to the point where I was I had to ask why is it seem like death is all like around me like I'm surrounded by death but I had to also learn last night and I'm still meditating on it like that it's not my fault it's not your fault that that person passed away because you left 
No, it was their time to go. It was time for God to get them. And, uh, guys, I just feel numb. Like, I've lost so many people. It's like, I'm tired of crying. I mean, like, I might cry on here. They'll be the, like, I didn't cry yesterday, but I might cry. I might cry on this video. I don't know. It's like, I'm tired of crying. You know, I'm, it's like, you know, sometimes, but sometimes you need to, you, sometimes you need to, but it also feels like, man, how long am I going to be in mourning? You know, <laughs> because that's what I'm feeling too. It's like, I've mourned since 2019 and I'm still mourning, <laughs> you know, I'm from 2019 now, 2021. And it's like. Easter and then Easter is Sunday and I won't have these people anymore in my life Easter is different now you know I know I'm an adult but you know I just remember Easter when we had me and my cousins would go to my grandmother's house and we would have Easter dinner we'd go to a church with her and she was Catholic and you know that's a big no-no with the UPC but we didn't care my grandmother loved to show me around because I would always have my hair done for Easter and I would always be in Easter dresses and I mean I'd be dressed in a nine y'all I was just I was um my mother and my grandmother's fashion model I was just a model they picked my mom picked out the clothes and my mo my grandmother showed showed me around to all of her uh, members her church members and then we'd go to her house, have Easter dinner, and then have an Easter egg hunt. Sorry, this is wobbling. Let me fix it. <sighs> Let me fix it. The wind is blowing really bad. It was snowing earlier. My goodness. This weather is such a tease. Spring is a tease. I told you that. Oh, it's, it's teasing. But, yeah. And we dye eggs and eat chocolate bunnies and chocolate whatever and my cousins would eat the peeps i i don't like them peeps too much it's sugar coated marshmallow i just give me a marshmallow but we'd always have peeps every year and i'd just be with my grandmother you know and my cousins and it'd be awesome and that was our tradition but now my grandmother's gone. Her house is gone. My cousins are all grown up and they have their own kids. And it's like now I have to, you know, it's not going to be the same, you know. It's not going to be the same. And I'm still trying to grip with that. I'm still trying to grip, make grips with that. That it's not going to be the same. <sighs> I'm trying to get. I, I, to be honest, I hate it when people say you got, you know, you got to get to a back to a new, new kind of normal. I want no, I want normal back to the old normal, but I can't go back. I can't go back. <sighs> And that's what sucks. But if I did go back, I'd have to go through all those experiences I've told you about in my in my story. I'd have to relive that. That's not what I want, but I want to just relive the good times. Because even though I was in the UBC and I was miserable and trying to be something I wasn't and trying to be like everybody, I still had good times. And it's And it sucks that, like, all these people that are gone from my life are not coming back. And you know, sometimes it does feel like, you know, why is I, why am I surrounded by death? I must've done something like, no, you didn't do anything. Just God is just taking people. He's just taking people right now. Some people it's time for them to go. 
so and this is going to be my second Easter without my loved ones and this is going to be the first uh, without my uncle I mean I never really had an Easter with him but I always call I would call him sometime on Easter don't have anybody call now you know And I, I'm talking about my my dad's brother who passed away yesterday. I'd call him, but I'd always see my mother's brother who died every Easter. I would see him. Um, but it's like I, you know, I feel like, man, when am I gonna stop grieving? When are we gonna get to the good part? But you gotta understand, you know, bad times, you need the bad times to appreciate the good ones. And you need, but, and not only that, you need the bad times because I guess the bad times lead to good times. I, and it's not your fault. It's not your fault. I feel like maybe I'm just talking to myself because I need to hear it. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. I don't care if people from your old church, if you were UPC or you, if you were in a legalistic church, I don't care what they tell you. If they tell you, if, like, you know, people, they see you and they see you going through bad times and they tell you, see, this, is, you know, if you want to stay with Christ, you need to get back with Christ. You need to, uh, <laughs> you need to. That was my dad. You need to get right with God, or you need to get back with the church. The devil is a lie. <laughs> like I'm just telling you right there, the devil is a lie. You don't go back. You, you hear me? You don't go back. That's the enemy. Like my goddad told me, that is the enemy telling you you need to go back to where you were. Instead of moving forward, he, God is about to take you somewhere. Hear me. God is about to take you to a higher level in him. He's going to take you higher. And all this mourning and all of this sadness and whatever's happening in your life, it seems like God is against you. Like, let me tell you something. God is not against you. He is for you. These people had to go because it was their time. And it's not your fault. You keep moving forward. Because the enemy just want to bring you back to where you used to be. Back in bondage. It ain't happening. And I guess me and you, my audience, are... We will have to find a new normal. And it seems like I'm going to have to grieve a little bit more. <laughs> but it's okay. I'm going to be okay. You all going to be okay. If I'm going to be okay, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. You know, I ask for all of you who listening. Please pray for my family my father's family my mother's family and i will be praying for you because i know right now what's going on in this world is not easy right now it's a lot of people are suffering from depression and anxiety i rebuke that in the name of jesus because you will overcome this and Whatever's going on. But just know. Th it's not your fault. It is not your fault. It's not because of what you're wearing. It's not because how you do your hair. It's not. 
anything you have done that caused either you, your family passing away or something happening to your family member or happening to you is not your fault. Sometimes it's just life. Okay. Now, I will say there's sometimes um, things happen. God's trying to get your attention. But I'm talking about times like this. It seemed like everybody you know and is dying. It's not because of you. It's not because you left. You made your decision. No. It, had, it has nothing to do with that. And I'm still learning this lesson. I'm still learning that it's not my fault. Because I've been blaming myself for so many years, y'all. So many years I've been blaming myself. I've been blaming myself for a lot of things that shouldn't have been on me. And I put it on myself. But we can't do that anymore. And I don't want to do that anymore. I have to make my own way. I did my hair for Easter myself. <laughs> Had a little touch, little flower girl J touch. <laughs> but hey, it's something. Some people like it. Some people think it's crazy, but it's me. Okay. I'm still trying. I'm still, when I say try, I mean, I'm still healing. You know, I'm still trying Jasmine. I'm trying her out, seeing what she likes. Not what others like. What works for her. What doesn't work for her. And looking at this camera. This works for me. <laughs> it's creative like me. It, it's a journey you all. And I'm just starting out on this journey. i come to find out. I, th I thought I was far off into the journey. No it's just beyond. <laughs> I thought it was further, but I mean, I have come a long way. I've come a long way, but I still need some work, <laughs> you know? I still need, I'm still learning. I'm still growing. I just got out of the UPC churches and system, and I'm still learning about myself, you know? It's a pathway to heal. I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know how lo long yours is going to take, but we need to forgive ourselves, have mercy on ourselves. I mean, we understand God gives his mercy and his mercy is abundant and abound. But when it comes to us, we don't give each, we, we don't even give ourselves mercy like Jesus gives us mercy. And we need to. We can be so hard on ourselves. We can be our own worst enemy. Far worse than the devil could do. We talk about the devil so much, but we, we could be our own worst enemy. But I'm going to be okay. You all are going to be okay. The Lord is with us. He has not left us. He hasn't forsaken us. He's with us in times of comfort. I mean, even right now, I feel his presence. I feel him like just wrapping his arm around me saying it's going to be okay. And I feel it. I just feel it right now. I don't know if you all can feel it. I feel it. I feel his presence. I really do. And that's the greatest thing I need for Easter right now. I mean, it's not going to go back to the way it was. But I know, you, you know, I'm there's something to look forward to. Uh, that lies ahead. I'm not going through for nothing. You're not going through for nothing. It's not for nothing. And we'll find out later on in life why we had to go through that. I mean, there was some stuff I went through in the past and I'm learning. I'm learning why I had to go through that. For example, with my godmother i call her gami the one that does my hair um we separated um there was a lot of misunderstanding a lot of fight i mean i haven't seen her in so long 
And I wanted to know why God separated me from her. And now I understand that I wanted to be like her. I really did. I wanted because I saw her as I put her on the pedestal that Jesus needed to be on, not her. I put her on the pe on Jesus's pedestal. Like that's the she's a woman of God and, and, and she hears from God. I want to be just like that. And, and, and uh, even like oh, when it came to my hair, I, I told you guys like I hated my hair. I hated it. I wouldn't touch it because I thought it was so fragile because it's always when I always sat in her chair. She always tell me, what am I supposed to do with this? Like there's so much breakage. So I thought my hair was ugly and weak and all the stuff I used to think I was. What I thought about my hair is what I thought about myself, that I was ugly, weak and not and not beautiful and just just broken, like just like my hair was broken. I was broken. And I didn't feel pretty until she did my hair. That was the only time I felt pretty. It, it had, God had to separate me so I could see that my hair is beautiful. And he even taught me how to do my hair. Like these, these are called Bantu knots. But, I, but he told me and he showed me how to do it. And he showed me how to put flowers in it so it's a floral bantu floral bantu knots and I didn't think I could ever do this I was so afraid to touch my hair but God put instruction and people to show me how like God will show you how, show you anything you want he will teach you how to do it how to do your hair how to clothes how to wear clothes he will teach you okay nobody taught me this but him honestly but I was even so scared of going to, off to college because I thought well who's gonna do my hair I was so nervous about that guys I thought my gummy ain't gonna be there who gonna do my hair I don't want nobody touching my hair I didn't want nobody touching my hair except for her And that's the truth. That's the honest truth. Because I was told, you know, people can put curses on your hair or touch it. Now, I agree you shouldn't let just any old body touch your hair, you know. Get a professional. But I would, I just, it was just fear. Just fear running my life. Just fear. And God had to separate me from my gami, my gami. He had to separate. He had to separate me because I had to find out who Jasmine was. I had to find out that that's not true. You're still beautiful whether sh she does your hair or not. You had to, I had to find out who Jasmine was and that Jasmine could do her hair or Jasmine could do these things. And she doesn't need approval except from God and I'm still learning that and I'm going to tell you once again you don't need anybody's approval except God's okay not everybody's going to like what you put on but that's them okay not you like today I learned like how much I've grown I've grown a lot I went to um I had breakfast with mom today and I wore this hairstyle and some people thought it was crazy. I think a, major a lot of people who look at me thought it was crazy. But that's them. This is, I think it's cute. <laughs> like, I mean, and you might, you all might think it's crazy. I love y'all. I still love y'all. But that's me. <laughs> this is me. This is my style. I'm Flower Girl J. And you all probably know what the J means. <laughs> so, yeah, I am Flower Jasmine. You're like, flower girl jasmine like and one day i'll be a bride 
<laughs> instead of a flower girl. <laughs> I'll be the flower bride. <laughs> but for now, a flower girl J, and I love it. <laughs> so I'm going to be okay. You are going to be okay. You got to find out who you are. And you guys probably think it's, well, it sounds like you already found yourself. I'm still, okay, I'm still on the journey. I'm still on the journey. But it's cool. I mean, there's still some fears I still need to conquer. There's still some things I need to conquer. And that's okay. It's going to take time. But I just, I'm glad I could talk to you guys today. I'm so sorry I didn't finish the story. But things came up. Sometimes life does that to you. And I just, I will probably, no, definitely, no, probably, not probably, definitely finish the story um, next week. But I had to get this off my chest because I have to <sighs> be strong for my family. So, on that note, can we pray together? I know you all will pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for all those watching. I thank you, God, for our one-on-ones together with whoever watches this with me. Thank you, Father God, for this beautiful day so that we may talk, Father God, about how you, O oh Lord, are always there. And always ready for an answer, Father God, to give when we ask questions. Father God, I thank you for giving us the strength when we lose our loved ones. Giving us strength, not only us, but to our families, Lord. Father God, for those who have lost so many people, whether it be from coronavirus or from natural causes or even murder, Lord. Father God. We know that you will give us strength, oh God, to endure. You will give us the time and the grace and mercy for us to grieve. But Lord Jesus, let us be kind to ourselves. Teach us how to be kind to ourselves, Lord. You give us the love and mercy, but we sometimes don't even give it to ourselves. Father God, I pray that you give us your strength, your love, and your kindness, but also teach us how to give us, give ourselves the same thing. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you all next week. Thank you all. I love you.